So I won't lie, today we're talking about a lot of Andromeda's Edge. What do you need to know with my number one most anticipated game of 2021? No lie here. Because I am getting into that tweener, slightly heavier, lightly worker placement, chaotic mess of a fun game. And, you know, I have Dwellings. I have a few other things on my radar this month, next month, the next couple months. But this one is right now easily my most anticipated because we know the most about it. There's a good time frame. There's a good pedigree. And there's starting to be some comparisons. I wish I had a rule book right now. That would be the number one thing that I wish I could talk you guys through to say, okay, what do you need to know about this? What are the key features? What do you need to be looking for when this launches at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 31st? If you're not following already, you should go go to the GameFound page and you should get a follow on it because it's going to get you a free faction. If you haven't done one of the puzzles, that's also going to get you a little bit of additional. So those are the things you need to do already. But what else are we talking about this week as well? We'll cover the other top games of this week that are launching. There's about half a dozen. And we'll go into it as you always love it. Let's talk Andromeda's Edge and a little bit of everything else. Let's do this. One of the things I love about this from Cargo to Alchemy and Luke Laurie is that He's super responsive. Like, you get responses from him, Peter Vaughn, all the time. Um, you know, probably you'll see them in the comment section talking about the fact that I'm talking about this, either here on Board Game Geek, where I post the blog video as well. But I love that. And so they've got an AMA over on Board Game Geek, basically saying, ask us stuff about the rules. And so I like that. They're going through a little bit of the details prior to the launch. And it never fails to amuse me when, like, one of the first posts or comments on there is like, hey, is this different than Dwellings or is this just a reskin? Should I buy this if I have Dwellings? Like, like, <laughs> what do you think they're gonna say? No offense, but what do you think they're gonna say? No, no, this is exactly the same. Don't buy it whatsoever if you've already got, no, come on. Well, one, that's not what they're gonna say, but two, this is a drastically different game. This is not, as, as much as I pun and joke and other people do, Dwellings in Space space dragons on spaceships whatever you want to call it and they run through some of the details because people are asking okay well there's not a dungeon here well uh, how are the events different in this game how are the workers going to be placed and then gathered back up in this game as opposed to the original they flat out say this is going to be more sophisticated this is going to be a little bit more advanced if you liked dwellings and dwellings uh consider that more of a, a lighter version of andromeda's edge I'm just going to scroll a little bit and give you a quick summary of what they've already laid out. There's not a dungeon area where you're kind of have to interact there, but what they're going to have are two modular areas that as you interact with them, they're going to go along a track, an advancement essentially of your event track. And when you get to a certain point on the event track, a new area comes out and a new event occurs. So building your engine leads to more regions coming out in a very incremental manner. Then they go, okay, uh, they clarify, yes, this is not just a reskin 2.0. And what you're going to be having here is you're going to be having leaders that are going to accomplish goals as you're going along. But without the leaders, you can't build developments. They're going to affect the scoring of the developments. There's also going to be a very, very robust solo mode if you're looking at it from that aspect of things. Battles are also going to be similar but different. Adjacency is important, but adjacency is not the sole factor like it sometimes is in dwellings. And you're going to have a range, a lot of your ships are gonna have a range of two, so you can be battling or joining in from nearby, which is a difference as well. Instead of hiring mercenaries, you're gonna be building your fleet, upgrading your own fleet, allowing you to get cards that are gonna manipulate raiders, but dominating the raiders, they say, I mean, the, the, Luke says right here, less cool than getting a super awesome fighter or upgrading your science vessel in order to help you. You're going to be claiming stakes on things like moons, which are going to give you the sole claim to the resources that they're producing. He also goes into a little bit about the tracks that you're going to be having to manage, a la dwellings in a sense. But the difference is, in this case, uh, the tracks and the balance between them is not going to be constant. It's going to be variable depending on the availability of the resources, uh, the likelihood of scoring on different tracks through the event cards, the types of upgrades, as well as whether it's early in the game or later in the game. A lot of dynamic changes there as you're going to be going along. 
he also makes it very clear that there is going to be a much heavier presence in this than dwellings which again makes me more very much interested in this in the engine building aspect of things how you build your engine has a specific and important effect on the trajectory of your course of the game which is cool because i love that they talk about the differences between science and then industry commerce as well as civ and how it's going to have a different impact as you're going along area control is important but once you've acquired it, you can't lose it either. And so that's kind of an interesting aspect of things. You can't lose an area if you're in control of it. That's interesting. Okay, developing it. Uh, no one can take some of your uh, locations as you develop them and claim them. And holy, is it going to be Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, essentially. This is probably one of the few Instabacks for me. You know, Marvel United that's ongoing currently. Again, they're busting out all the stops for Marvel United. So I'm going to end up paying a lot more for that one than I expected. But this is the other one, apart from maybe Elder Scrolls coming from Chip Theory in March, the only potential locks for me so far in the first, I don't want to say quarter, maybe even third of the year. And that's saying something. I am really, I have really scaled back on the crowdfunding in the last, you know, year and a half or so. And I'm down to like one or two projects a month mostly, which... For some of you, you're like, oh my gosh. And for others of you, you're like, oh my gosh, in the other way. So this is an exciting, exciting game. It's just going to be also the one thing I don't see scrolling through here is what's the price point going to be? I'm going to guess about 150. I'm going to guess it's going to be very comparable to Voidfall, if you remember that from Mind Clash. I'm going to guess it's very similar in scope. I'm going to guess it's very similar and maybe slightly lower in complexity. I, again, not having played either of them. But I think it's going to be more appealing to me as a whole. Easier to get to the table. Like I said, super excited by this one. Um, I wish I would have had a chance to play it before this, but... Yeah. I'm excited. There's a reason that this is going to be getting the hype, the clicks, and the interest. Because it, I think it has the potential to be that good, too. Will it live up to its namesake? That's going to be the big question. Uh, anticipate seeing a bunch of videos as well talking about this very thing over the next week or two, especially after it launches. And the should you backs, should you not backs, reasons you should back, reasons you absolutely shouldn't back, I'm sure you'll see tons of that as well. The other big one that's gonna be launching, number two this week, and, and, and again, I have no clue the scope or what this is gonna look like from Restoration Games. Restoration Games is bringing us another classic and it's Crossbows and Catapults. I mean, if you're familiar with that, I mean, from your childhood like I am, great. I just don't know. This is a nostalgia kick, and I have not been um, overly impressed. I guess I'm also probably not the target audience for a lot of these. I did Fireball Island. Um, I, I wasn't happy with it. It was a little bit too fiddly. Uh, the molds weren't great, and it was a little bit too hard to play with kids with them constantly wanting to bump it or being able to bump it and not having all the marbles fall. And it just, it just wasn't my piece of cake, you know? And so I, I got rid of it. I sold it to someone else, and I'm hoping that they have a great time with it. For me personally, it was just too much for what it was. Now, the only thing that we know from some Board Game Geek forum comments and from some initial postings from Restoration Games is it's gonna have a deeper gameplay. I'm not sure what that actually means. More highly engineered weapons, again, uh, no rubber bands with this one, and pinch to fire technology. So it's gonna reward more skill, they say, rather than luck. Castles are constructed with more detailed components, more intricate, and more varied structures. And so this is supposedly, based on the latest information that I had, also gonna be launching on the 31st. The other one that has just made the hotness, in case you missed it, um, it's been creeping up there, the search for lost species. And this is the latest from Renegade, and they're calling this a sequel follow-up set apart to search for Planet X in terms of logic, deduction, searching for a species that is thought to be otherwise extinct there's going to be six different species that you're going to be trying to find you're reporting your sightings through an app again so they're definitely staying with the planet x side two different map boards to explore and then you're going to be it says going out with partners numerous partners to find the species encourage others to conduct their own expeditions to rediscover them and it's competitive for one to four players <sighs> 
Is it going to be more complex? Is it going to be slightly heavier than Search for Planet X? Is it going to be as purely deductive? I mean, Search for Planet X is a very, very solid game. It's probably, I, I will make the argument, it's the best pure deduction game on the market. I did the review on this channel very early on, and I, I know it's great. At the same time, it was too dry for me. Just not enough something, not enough fun. It just lacked the I was having fun factor. I like this theme better, but I just don't know what to expect with this either from Renegade. Renegade has not given us necessarily in the past, especially with like the G.I. Joe campaigns, necessarily the incentive to get it on crowdfunding, although there were some exclusives. So we'll see how do you do exclusive through the deduction game, though, is more of the question. Now, over on the Board Game Geek forums, they say you're going to get your copy in May. So like this must already be all set, which means there are going to be no stretch goals. There's going to be uh, no fake whatever's to go along with it in terms of extras. Regular retail, they say already, is going to be in August, but backers are going to get it in May. There are going to be some previews already by a couple of the biggest channels. Uh, they're going to have an AMA on Reddit uh, per the Board Game Geek forums. Um, I mean, it's by the same folks that did Search for Planet X. So if you like that, this is going to be more of that. So this is one that, you know, if the price point is good, I don't care about getting it months early, but give me an incentive. And on the Board Game Geek forums right now, there's no perceived incentive to get it, at least from that aspect. That being said, I mean, this is a game that I could easily see myself winding up with in my collection because maybe it is a little bit more uh, thematically incorporated for me personally speaking. But again, it's going to be a price point issue. But this is one I could see myself trading for post-market because somebody's going to want to trade. Somebody's going to want to trade it. And so, again, this is probably going to be hundreds of thousand dollars if it holds up true and it's priced well and there's a little bit of incentive at least to get it now. So that is the other biggest one that is going to be launching this week. Three other quick ones that you should have on your radar. This first one, uh, the most intriguing to me, is called Fork. F-O-R-K, Fox Owl Rabbit Kale. And it's a two to six player trick taking game is the goal to capture animals or the kale based on the food chain. You're gonna be playing these games in tricks where you're laying your cards face down, uh, not simultaneously, but one after another, where the kale is leveled face up, everything else is face down. And so depending on how the food chain, Paper, Scissor, Rock, uh, Lizard, Spock goes, you may win, you may lose, and you may score a card per trick depending on how you do. If you have five scores, the game ends, and then the player with the highest score wins. Uh, there's also going to be a team optional Four player game to go along with this. Uh, this is from Sunrise Tornado Game Studio. And so this one's also going to be launching on the 30th. Similarly, um, in a slightly different way, um, name wise, Tentrix is also going to be launching on the 30th, but Tentrix is actually a game uh, with more of a pattern building tile placement. They say uh, the new form of entertainment in the year 20. 54, uh, the objective is you have neuronal games instead of tabletop games. You're gonna be placing these pieces uh, indicated by the cards on your board, trying to avoid um, certain things from reaching your pieces and you're gonna be gaining effect tokens that allow you to sort of interfere with other people's. It kind of looks like Tetris, if you will. Uh, so th that's kind of a little bit of what's going on. I'm not really sure how it's gonna be. It looks like a combination of Tetris and Project L, if you will. So that one's gonna be launching on the 30th. And then last up here, we have Olynthia, which is a cooperative, but also competitive one to five player game, which seems to be a little bit more area control, asymmetric, as well as um, area movement style of game where you're going up against dragons that have destroyed the cities and built nests and your survivors who are trying to take your turns simultaneously to band together to defeat the nests by the end of five rounds. But you have to defeat at least one nest of these dragons per round starting with round two. And that's the cooperative mode. Uh, in the competitive mode, um, what you're gonna be doing is there's less dragons, but you're competing against other guilds to basically become the leader of the land with conquering what's left after five rounds as well. So not a whole lot of other information on Board Game Geek or out there. So we'll see kind of uh, where it falls and what it looks like uh, when it goes live. But that's it. That is the roundup for this upcoming week. I wasn't kidding. We're going to talk more about Andromeda's Edge. Andromeda's Edge, Andromeda's Edge, Andromeda's Edge. I am super hyped for this one. Uh, you know, if GameFound wasn't blocked by work, <laughs> I'd probably be backing it uh, when it launches. But I'll have to wait until I get home and then I'll have some time to gather my thoughts and look at it for the first time and gather my reactions. Maybe I'll film a reaction video. No, I'm, 
not doing that. Like reaction to a reaction. Like, is that a thing? Can I do that on the board game scene of things? No one does those. Maybe I should start doing those. Reaction! I don't know. You guys are done watching this at this point. No one's watching it at the end here anyway. I'm just blabbing and talking about things. And I need to go get Stone Saga played. I'll be back with you later. <laughs> I'm going to have maybe a news video coming up this week. Uh, hopefully a, a review video of Stone Saga. Um, as well as the top of February. And that sort of thing. So, I don't know. I'm done. Peace out. Short video. Love talking about board games. Have a great weekend.